We are here at the Cedar River Watershed. We are doing an experiment to see if we can transplant beneficial bacteria and invertebrates from this pristine watershed to a restored urban watershed, Thornton Creek. What is it that that meter is doing? This is a dissolved oxygen probe that also measures conductivity and temperature. Trying to get an idea of if there's more dissolved oxygen in the well so we can compare sites. And then we measure solutes. An example of a solute? Basically ions in the water, how many particles are in the water. So typically, if you have a more polluted site, you have more ions. And so that will show a higher conductivity. Yesterday when we were measuring conductivity in Thornton, we were having readings in the 200 and now we're seeing conductivity around 50, which you know is one indicator that this is a pristine stream. Thornton is not. The reason why we're taking the water from the pisometer is because the pisometer is specially designed to capture water that flows underneath the stream. This is the hyperreic water, and we're going to take that back to the lab and analyze it for little micro creatures. This is what we're calling a, a colonization basket. We put the material that was used to rebuild Thornton Creek, so we actually got that, put that in here, and what we're hoping is that bacteria and invertebrates will colonize the material that's in there. When the baby salmon are incubating, they are down in the gravel. You know, most of their food as they grow up, they're feeding from the water column in the stream itself. But that doesn't mean that things that are happening in the hyperreic aren't still super important to salmon. There's a lot of very small invertebrate taxa that are down there playing important roles. Then we're going to take this basket, put it into a tube with water, and keep it on ice and transplant it to the Thornton Creek restoration site. We're going to take these rocks from Cedar River that we just collected and stick them into the well here at Thornton Creek. So then hopefully the benthic invertebrates and the microbes that are coming from Cedar River will help to jumpstart the hyperreic ecosystem here. And uh, we'll probably have it, what, a couple more months out here? and then eventually pull this basket again, and, and some of them we'll pull and take back to the NOAA lab. When we studied um, the Cedar River, uh, we found a lot of mayflies, caddisflies, and stoneflies, and those three species are often the dominant species in a stream and indicates and, uh, not a lot of pollution. The physical restoration has been done, the stream channel has been changed, and in planting these insects into the stream is focusing on the biological component of the restoration. Because these insects really play an important role in the ecosystem, recycle nutrients back into the food web, break down dead organic matter. Um, and they also are a very important um, source of food for fish. Here we are in Thornton Creek again. Yeah. This is one of our favorite spots in the city. Linda Rhodes and I have been working on monitoring Thornton Creek on this kind of really exciting, innovative approach to stormwater management and urban creek restoration. Just looking around, you can see how much has changed. Right. Yeah. Right. So a lot of times we look at the stream and we only really notice the bigger things. The greatest number of species and even the greatest mass of organisms that live in the stream are the little things, insects and worms that scurry along in the bottom that we might not even be able to see with our eye. Contributing even more to the ecosystem and more to the mass are all the microbes that are supporting the invertebrates, especially in the hyperreic zone. 
Bacteria are an important part of the world. The overwhelming majority of them are good and we need them. What they're doing is converting a lot of the organic material, dead stuff, into nutrients so that it can be taken up by other kinds of organisms, or they're serving as food for the macroinvertebrates themselves. And that's been one of the things that we've observed is that the activity of the bacteria in the hyperreic zone is much higher in these restored areas than in the unrestored areas. So that means that they're very busily working away. But you know, they created this hyperreic zone, they built it, and they came. The invertebrates immediately started populating that area. A very interesting cool aspect of this Thornton restoration is that Seattle Public Utilities is actually considering the importance of the hyperreic and seeing that as one important piece that needs to be brought back to try to improve functioning for the whole stream.